How marvelous that we have a book called Proverbs. It gives us such wisdom for life. Chapter 11, verse 31. It says, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. I believe Solomon wanted our attention. He begins this with, Behold. You should soberly consider God's dealings with men. He will repay men on earth for their actions. You're not hid from his eyes. You're not lost in a crowd. The righteous will be blessed. The wicked will be punished. <clears throat> but we find that the righteous and wicked both suffer adversity on the earth. And the natural man cannot understand or discern God's love or his hatred. Listen to this, Ecclesiastes 8.14. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men, unto whom it happeneth according to the works of the wicked. Again there be wicked men, to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said this also is vanity. Chapter 9, he says, For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is a one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not. As is the good, so is the sinner. As he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that they go to the dead. Now it seems from that that, that whatever happens, happens to both good and to evil. However, the Bible reveals there's a very great difference, which natural men cannot seem to learn. God treats the righteous and the wicked very differently. Spiritually, spiritual men, they know this. They understand his present and future dealings. The saved man, he receives the blessings of God, but also has adversity given to him in love. And it is for his perfection. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12 says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth even as the Father, the Son in whom he delighteth. We find also that God sends prosperity to the wicked, but it comes as a means of judgment. Proverbs one thirty two says, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. He sends them also adversity as a warning of greater judgment to come. Christian, just take heart. God is the giver both of blessings and adversities. However, their purpose is very different between the believer and the wicked. God is seeking for your best, even though you have adversity. And God also blesses us in spite of who we are. How we ought to thank God for the grace of God and His ways of dealing with us.